Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. This is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be back streaming once again for my Photography Masterclass, my weekly series on just about all things photography. Of course, concentrating most of our software efforts on Lightroom and Photoshop. And of course, uh, when possible, doing live shoots in studio. This is episode, I believe, 17. So uh, I kind of started right at the beginning of the pandemic, and um, it's been a good thing. It's been a good distraction from a lot of uh, those things that were going on. But of course, uh, keeping in mind and being mindful of everything that's going on in the world and how it impacts people, uh, all I can say and reach out and say is that if you need us, we're here. If you have questions, if you have concerns, if something's going on in your life, you just want to talk about it, we, we will listen. Um, not that we can solve every problem, but we will certainly try our best to listen and solve what we can solve. So with that said, uh, today is Masterclass Friday, and I decided to do something that was very popular during uh, the Kelby One Lightroom conference that I, um, I taught at a few weeks ago as a virtual conference. And uh, we did some virtual, uh, Adobe sponsored it, and we did some uh, virtual q and A. So I did a QA and a in the middle of each day, and it was amazing to see the, not only the number of people that attended, that stayed the entire time, I think we had an hour, and all the questions that came in for all things Lightroom. So I said, well, since that worked so well uh, during that conference, I decided to make it a, a segment of my photography masterclass. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, thank you for joining us. And I know people could be watching this all over. You could be watching this on YouTube. You could be watching it on Facebook. You could be watching it on Twitter. Uh, but of course, the main property that we're broadcasting this on is over on Behance, b.net slash Adobe Live. Here, I'll show it to you. Uh, so if you want to participate in the chat, you want to ask questions, I may see your question on other platforms, but I'll definitely see your question over on Behance. Uh, so th that's the place you want to go. If you do have a question today, if you just want to hang out on your platform and watch it, whatever that platform is, great. But just note that I can't watch all the different chats and answer all the questions and do the demos and so forth and so on. So I have um, both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom the newer or Lightroom Cloud version that we out like to refer to it as sometimes. I have both of those open. I have, I think, Photoshop open. I have uh, my iPad, my phone connected in case people have mobile questions. Uh, I know Tim has already been in the chat asking some questions. So, uh, and I see Steve's got one in there as well. So I'm going to start off with those. And if I didn't get a bunch of questions, I even have a few stragglers that were left over from the Lightroom conference that I ran out of time and didn't get a chance to ask. So once again, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you probably midway through that if you have questions, um, be sure to um, head over to b.net, wherever this, this over there, <laughs> b.net slash Adobe Live uh, to ask your questions. Um, so with that said, today is also Friday, meaning Masterclass Friday. So I kick things off with uh, the Photography Masterclass. Paul Tranny does one on graphic design and Photoshop. Um, uh, Jason Levine does one on video. Kyle Webster, I think, has now been slotted like in the middle. Kyle Webster does one on painting and drawing. And then Howard Pinsky does one on, um, on uh, Howard Pinsky does one on XD, UX UI design. I was thinking I got, almost got him and Kyle mixed up for a second. But two very different people that do very different things. <laughs> So with that said, I see a bunch of questions coming in already. So we're just going to, without further ado, get to those questions. And uh, where I can answer your question with an actual showing you how to do it, I will. Um, where I can, I'll just give you the verbal answer. So let me scroll back up to the top of the questions I saw so far. Uh, Tim had a couple. Tim had a lot of questions. Uh, so first question Tim asks is, when would I recommend using Lightroom? versus Lightroom Classic. So there are two versions of Lightroom that are current. Uh, the Classic version gets updates. The new Lightroom version gets updates. They both get updates. So which one should you use? Should you use both? And uh, the, the official Adobe answer is we want you to pick one. Like we don't care which one you pick, but pick one. Don't really spend a lot of time, especially on the desktop, trying to use both. Um, now with that said, 
Lightroom on your mobile devices is more in tune and more closely related to the newer Lightroom on the desktop, but you can still use it with Classic, and I've shown that in previous episodes of this masterclass. Um, but back to Tim's question, which one should I use? So let me go over my desktop and let me show you uh, the differences for those of you who, who are brand new and haven't like really seen. So this is Lightroom Classic. And as a professional photographer, I've used Lightroom Classic since day one, basically over 12 years ago, I believe, when Lightroom 1.0 first came out. I've been using it ever since. Uh, so I know and, and, and love Lightroom Classic. I use it every single day. It's usually open on my computer most of the day. But that doesn't mean that I, I don't appreciate the things that are going on in the other Lightroom. So this is the Lightroom cloud-based version, cloud version. Lightroom is what it's officially called, but that's confusing because if you just say Lightroom, then people don't know. Are you spe speaking about Lightroom? Or Lightroom Classic. So I'll I'll refer to it as Lightroom Cloud just so there's that distinction. Um, now, what's the difference and, and why would you pick one over the other and which one should you pick? The difference is the original Lightroom that we've known for 12, 12 plus years and we keep using and we will keep using for, for, for the foreseeable future. The biggest difference is that you're managing the storage of your photos. So your photos remain on your hard drives uh, you are responsible for backing them up. If catastrophe happens, there's no need to call Adobe because there's nothing we can do. If you if you if you lost your drives, um, stolen, damaged, flood, fire, theft, whatever it would be, hopefully you have backups because there's nothing we can do uh, in the cloud if your images weren't in the cloud. So your, your originals in Lightroom Classic are always on your drives whether they're JPEGs, whether they're RAW files, what DNGs, which are RAW files, whatever they are, they're on your drives. The other version, on the other hand, when you import your photos, JPEGs, RAW, DNG, whatever it is, they get backed up to the cloud. And therefore, if catastrophe happened, computer died, hard drive died, something got damaged, stolen, water damage, whatever, you replace that equipment, which is still on you. <laughs> Once you replace that equipment, all you do is just sign back in, download Lightroom, sign back in, and all your photos are still there. So that's one of the biggest advantages to this version over the other one is that we're protecting your images with that backup, storing them in the cloud, and also the fact that you are you could go to Lightroom on a different computer and all of your images and all of your edits and everything is still there. So there are, those are the major differences. Uh, Lightroom Classic, of course, being around the longest has the most features. It literally has dozens, if not hundreds of features that the other one doesn't have yet. But, uh, but it depends on where you are in your photography. If you're just starting out, which was more in line with Tim's question, which one would be more beginner friendly? And I would say that the new one is definitely more beginner friendly. Even the, the team even thought about different terminology that would make it easier for a new user. It's confusing to go back and forth between the two because I, you know, the terminology is different in some cases. For example, my photos are organized in albums in the new one, whereas they're organized in collections in the old one or classic one, and that they're the same thing, they're just different names. In the newer one, I add photos. In the uh, classic version, I import photos. So the newer one was definitely designed to be more user-friendly for beginners, but it just, again, depends on where you are in your photography. Tim also had another good question. Uh, when would I use Lightroom over Bridge? And I, I have used, again, Bridge since the beginning of time, which it came out in uh, Creative Suite 1 or 2, I can't remember. Uh, but I even wrote the first book on Adobe Bridge. So I know Bridge quite well, and I've used it for years. But the minute Lightroom came out after Bridge, Lightroom is for photographers. Bridge, still a great tool, but it's more in line for graphic designers. So if you're a photographer um, and you want to organize and you're, and you're going to continue shooting, you're going to continue having more and more new pictures, then that's what Lightroom's for. Bridge is a file browser. That was the original name of it. It was the file browser and it became a separate desktop application. It only sees a folder or folders in time. You disconnect that drive, that's it. Bridge can't see those images anymore. Whereas Lightroom, if I disconnect the drive, the thumbnails are still there, the previews are still there. I can even still edit with smart previews 
even though the drive's not connected anymore. So from a photographer standpoint, uh, Lightroom, either Lightroom is your tool. From a graphic design standpoint, absolutely bridge because you're not storing thousands of photos. You're working with different file formats, PDF, Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, which bridge does a great job at those things. All right, um, next up. How do I know if my DSLR, Tim, you got some real good questions here. How do I know if my DSLR is supported by Lightroom? Well, there is, a, I would Google Lightroom support for my camera because uh, I don't I don't keep that page handy. But if I were to go to my browser, I can go find it real quick. Uh, we keep a running tally of um, uh, Lightroom compatible camera. So if you just Google that, for example, we, you'll get our, our document, which is probably right here, right off the bat. Camera supported by Camera Raw, which is also the same thing as Lightroom in, in this case. And it will show you the cameras that are supported and what version of, of Camera Raw. Now, you can do Camera Raw, but I think there's one specifically for Lightroom. Uh, dun, 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 dun. There's well, there, And there's also two types of support, so it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for camera support, this will do it. But if you're looking for uh, camera or images or cameras that can be tethered to Lightroom Classic, that's a different document. Because although we may start off with quick support for the camera the minute the camera is introduced or shortly after it ships, the tethering might come a little later. Uh, that's where you're plugging the camera into your computer with the USB cable and you're shooting directly into Lightroom Classic. Um, the tethering support isn't always the same. So the camera is usually supported first, the tethering support comes after, and this will again give you that list um, of cameras that are supported uh, and what the minimum version of Lightroom is that would you would need to run that particular camera. All right, so that's where I would start is just a quick Google search. Because again, I don't even uh, know them all. They're always changing with every version. I don't know them off the top of my head. Okay, next question. Um, let's see what Fred has here. Uh, we're taking a photo in Photoshop for edits and maybe layers. How can you keep the layers when you bring it back in the lighter? Okay, so that Fred, that happens automatically. Uh, so his question was, uh, when taking a photo into Photoshop, from Lightroom for edits and maybe adding layers, like adding text, duplicating layers, adding more images, doing composites, whatever it is. Uh, how do you keep the layers when coming back into Lightroom? And that is, a there is actually a distinction. So let me do one real quick. Let me uh, just take one of these photos here. I'll just grab this one. And I'll open it in Photoshop. I just did Command E, uh, Control E on, on Windows. And that will open it up in Photoshop. And here it's starting to come in in a second, hopefully. Maybe not. I also have two versions of Photoshop open, so maybe it opened up in the other one. It did. <laughs> That's why I don't see it. All right. Let's pull over the other one here. I have a beta of Photoshop that I'm also experimenting with. Uh, but anyway, here's, uh, here's the image. So if I do anything to this image, if I like, um, here, let's add some text to it. And who asked that question? That was Fred. If I add the word Fred with, in very small text that you can't read, there we go, and we make it bigger, and we click OK, so now there's a layer, and I hit Save, and I close it. Yep, I know. OK, and I head back over to Lightroom Classic, I think that's where I got it from. There it is. So there's the one that I just edited right next to its original. So that's why it says one of two and two of two, because um, Lightroom, especially if it's a raw file, will automatically make a copy uh, without question. So it just did it. It just opened it up and said, hey, here it is. You're ready to go. Uh, here's a copy. Um, when I saved it and brought it back, I have my catalog set to bring it back as a PSD. The default is a TIFF. Either one will support your layers. So uh, I just prefer PSDs. But uh, even if you didn't change anything, your... Uh, layered file will come back. So if I now uh, want to change that file to, oh, I misspelled Fred, or I want to make a change, I go back and do a Command E. Now I get prompted the question, do I want to edit a copy, which would not have the layers, or do I want to edit the original, which would have the layers, and I click Edit, 
that opens it back up, I've got that layer. Still, I can go ahead and continue working. So there, uh, what was Fred's last name? Fred's last name was Krieger. And so I add in the Krieger text. I move it up and over a little bit. I save it. I close it. I wait for it to finish saving this time before I try and close it. And it finishes. And then I go back to Lightroom. And now it says Krieger. So the, the layers are already preserved. You don't have to do anything for that. There is one caveat. If I head over to the uh, other Lightroom, Lightroom cloud-based version, and I do the same thing, which I can, oh, provided I have an original. Let's do, well, I can actually just do a smart preview. That's fine. Uh, use a smart preview. And of course, it opened up in the other one. There it is. Okay, and I now uh, do the same thing. I say Fred. And we'll make it bigger. And this, I'm just adding a text layer because it's simple. You could do anything you want. Add adjustment layers, multiple layers, layer groups, anything you would normally do in Photoshop, clone, whatever it is. Uh, and when you save that, close it and come back to uh, Lightroom. Oh, other Lightroom. To that Lightroom, it puts it there. It stacks it with the original. Now, here's the difference. They both work that round trip the same way. No question. The difference is, if I go back to Classic, and I now start making some Lightroom adjustments to that PSD, to that file that came back. So let's say I go into the Develop module, and oh, I don't want to do a before and after. Let's get out of my before and after view. Hang on one second. Here, there we go. Let's get out of the before and after view. And I go into the develop module and I just, um, let's drop the, uh, let's, uh, I don't want to do that either. I'm just trying to think of something I want to do quickly. And of course I'm not being quick, but let's say that I want to um, drop the saturation all the way down. Okay. So I dropped the saturation all the way down. Okay. That happened in Lightroom. Of course it didn't happen in Photoshop. If I go edit this image again in Photoshop, it will still be a yellow background with a color image and the text will still be there and the layers will still be there. That's the way it's supposed to work. However, if I go to the new Lightroom and do the exact same thing to this image, I start making changes to it in the editing. This Lightroom has what I consider, my personal opinion, a flaw. That if I now go make a change in Lightroom after the fact, it flattens it so you lose the editability of your layers so that's a warning <laughs> that if you're using this newer version of Lightroom you edit in Photoshop come back you got layers you can keep going back and forth you'll still have layers the minute you touch this image with the editing controls your layers are flattened so you would go back to edit and you would just be a flattened file and you would have to then do whatever it is you would do so um, that is a problem in my opinion. It should not be doing that. And hopefully that gets resolved at some point. But just be warned that you can go back and forth all day long and have your layers. But the minute you come back to this Lightroom and make a change in Lightroom to the editing, to colors, whatever, um, then you flatten the image. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, next up. Um, when you're shooting in your studio, do you prefer Classic or CC for the first round of edits? Classic. Because when I'm shooting in my studio, because you, you gave it away right there, I'm, I'm using Classic because if I'm in studio, I'm tethering. Uh, so, and the new cloud-based version doesn't have tethering. So, that is, a in a nutshell, in studio, plugged into a cable, tethering every single time. So, when you see me do my photography master classes, you will always see me doing, if I'm doing a live shoot in the studio, which is over there. Uh, you will always see me using Classic to um, to show you guys as I'm shooting, taking the shots, that they're coming in line. Uh, so, Classic is my, my go-to. All right, time flies when you're having fun. Thanks for the distraction. You're welcome, Mary. Uh, great that everyone's here. When you're outside, the iPad for your offloading photos to edit. And if so, is the, the mobile Lightroom app. Okay, so Steve's asking a question. Uh, when you're outside, do you have an iPad with you for offloading photos to edit? And if so, do you have, uh, is it the Lightroom mobile app? Yes and no. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, I don't, I don't 
always follow that workflow, even though I probably should. So uh, what I use instead, uh, if I'm out and about, let's see if I got it here. Yeah, I got one here. Um, this is a West, this is, I used to, there's a, a Lacy and this is a Western Digital. So this is the Western Digital, my passport. I don't work for Western Digital. I don't get paid for Western Digital. I'm just mentioning what I use. Uh, so there's no, um, <laughs> there's no royalty check coming in. But anyway, this is the My Passport, and here I'll put my finger over the password. I, mean, I probably changed it anyway. But this is a wireless hard drive. So what that means is um, it's got a, a card slot on it. It's got USB ports on it. It's got um, it can be connected directly to a computer or an iPad wired, and it can it also has its own hotspot. So even in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere where there's no Wi-Fi, I could turn this on. Probably not charged, but I could turn this on. Uh, it will broadcast a hotspot. My iPad, my MacBook, what my phone, whatever can see it, and I would have imported the images directly to the drive. So I'll put a card in here or plug a card reader onto the back of it transfer the images directly onto the drive with no computer necessary. Now they're backed up on here. They're still on the memory cards. And if I decide that I want to look at them, edit them with my iPad, then I would plug the iPad in and copy them over to the iPad to do anything I want to do. So that would be my third backup. Because if I do copy them over to the iPad in the Lightroom app, um, since that's based on the cloud-based version, my originals would get uploaded to the cloud whenever I have an internet connection. So um, this is my workflow for mobile, not going directly from the camera to the iPad, although I do do it occasionally just for a couple shots here and there. But let's say I'm on vacation, let's say I'm on a, on a, on a travel shoot, um, I'm backing up the whole card to this. Then, if there are images I just want to play with, I'll either transfer them directly from the card again to the iPad, which is probably faster, or wirelessly transfer them from my Nikon Z6 to the to the iPad, or um, card, or from the drive to the iPad and work on them that way. So yes, those are my various mobile workflows. Uh, all right, let's see what else. If you, Mike's asking, if you make a web gallery through Lightroom, where does it live and how can you delete it if you don't, if you want to do so? And again, depends on which Lightroom you're talking about. So if you're talking about Lightroom uh, Classic, which is the one I have in front of me. Well, and I've turned it off because I don't use it anymore. But Lightroom Classic has a web module. Now, the web module that was built in the Classic, just like you worry about storing your images, you worry about hosting your, your pages. This does not do any hosting for you. So it's the, question, the answer to where does it live, wherever you've uploaded it to. So in other words, I used to use this all the time back in the day because I used to use the galleries. I had third-party galleries, um, and I would create my whole website from the Lightroom web module. Uh, and I would have my, I would update my portfolios through it, the whole nine yards. But that was me, once I'm done uh, editing how it looks, going down here to an FTP server and literally uploading it to my hosting provider. So you're doing the whole thing. You're managing that whole process, if that's the one you're talking about. Let me turn that back off because I don't use it anymore. But if you're talking about the uh, other Lightroom, and you wanted to go in, well, first of all, your your albums are already synced to the cloud. They're synced to, to um, Adobe's cloud. If you then decide to um, share and invite, so I right-clicked on the album we're looking at. I do a share and invite right now. This album is private. If I do enable sharing, so now it's creating a custom link that lives on the Adobe servers. And because my images are already there, I can either do this by invite only, or I can say anyone can view it if they have the link. So people can, I can share the link, people can pass the link around, whatever. And then I can also start to choose settings like, uh, do I want to display the name and how I want it to look? Do I want people to be able to download JPEGs or not? Do I want people to be able to make comments or not? Uh, I can turn on all these things, and this lives. If I click Done, this will then live on the Adobe server. How do you how do you get rid of it? Um, once you're finished with it, you go right back to the same thing, and you stop sharing it. So 
that if that ends if you were talking about this one it's just going back to the setting and stopping it anytime you don't want that to be shared anymore and then people won't be able to um they won't be able to look at it anymore or download files from it anymore or they won't see it won't be in other words it won't exist as a shared file anymore your images will still be in the cloud but no one will have access to them once you stop other than you okay uh next up these are great questions by the way thank you for making my job easier all right, uh, I have a question. Adobe Lightroom versus Camera Raw. Okay, so Marwayne's asking a good question uh, because there there really isn't it really isn't a competition. If I were to um, let's pick a different image. Let's go here. And yep, we'll use a smart preview because I don't have that original in this in the cloud in the cloud. We'll go to the other Photoshop that it opened in. There we go. And uh, oh, I can't show it here. But here, let's go. <laughs> I, I want to show you things I can't show you. All right, so let's open up this one. There we go. Well, I, I, I'm having to use a different image because that that uh, Adobe Camera Raw would be different than what you have today. So let's go to uh, Filter. Let's go to Camera Raw Filter. And if I go to the Camera Raw Filter, okay, great. And if I were to go back to either Lightroom and I were to go to Edit, I have the exact same sliders and controls. So when you say Lightroom versus Camera Raw, there's like less than 1% different. The difference is, uh, one of the big differences is, for example, and this is such a minor thing, but I like it. Uh, if I go into the Develop Module in Lightroom Classic and I grab the White Balance Eyedropper, uh, I can get a preview before I click. So you can see the image on the left-hand side. If I click here, that's not a good place to click because uh, it would turn the image blue. Camera Raw doesn't have that. <laughs> that's about it there's like two or three little things like that the camera raw doesn't have that lightroom develop module has so um if if your answer is from a strictly editing standpoint they're the same if your if your question is from an interface standpoint or a convenience standpoint i'm going to use lightroom because that's where my images are uh, so i'm you know it would take the extra steps to have to open the image up in Photoshop just to use Camera Raw when I have the develop module or even in the other Lightroom, the edit module, or not module, but the edit panel to do the same thing I would be doing in Camera Raw. So why would I go to Camera Raw if I already am here with my images? Uh, so if that's your versus question, that would be my answer. I would always use Lightroom unless the image wasn't in Lightroom. Then I would be opening up the image in, in Photoshop and using Camera Raw. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see here. I would like to know where in Lightroom Classic can I find out how to set up the Wacom One tablet to use with my MacBook Pro? There isn't anything in Lightroom Classic that is specific tablet settings or that you would turn on. Um, the tablet support is built in. So, for example, if you did have that Wacom one, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq right now, and I start if I start using the adjustment brush, that pressure sensitivity is already built into Classic. There's nothing I have to do. Therefore, there are no settings. Uh, so, there's nothing to turn on, turn off in terms of using Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. All right. What if I don't have Lightroom installed on that backup computer. Um, well, then you would go to your Creative Cloud app on that backup computer and download it. Uh, unless there's more to that question I'm missing. Is that fixed? Will it be fixed? Okay, good question. Chris Dahl's asking, and this is more it's, it's more of a <laughs> more of a technical issue than 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 um, I, I'm going to have time to really get into. So um, remember when I said early on, pick one, our stance is pick one, classic or the newer Lightroom. And of course the newer Lightroom also includes mobile, which is part of Chris's question. Um, one of those differences and the reason why, why we tell you don't try and use both because one of the differences is in keywording. Uh, while edits go back and forth between the two versions. So if I edit something on my mobile device and I come back to cloud, hey, the edit's there and I can go and adjust the edit, great. But one of the things that doesn't seamlessly go back and forth are keywords. And it's because of just the structure in the way Lightroom Classics keywords have worked for years. Uh, if I go back to the grid, for example, and I go to keywords, 
Um, Lightroom Classic uses, and this is the technical part, uses hierarchical keywords. So family, daughter, uh, Susan, Mary, uh, granddaughter, blah, blah, blah. So it's a hierarchy to it. The newer Lightrooms and Lightroom on your phone doesn't have that hierarchy. So that's why they're not directly compatible. That's why if you put keywords in one, you won't see them in the other. Um, if I do it in mobile, I won't see them in classic. If I do it in classic, I won't see it in mobile. If I do it in Lightroom, cloud, desktop, or mobile, then I will see it in both because they're the same key keyword structure. So uh, that's the answer to why it doesn't work today. Uh, will it ever be fixed? I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't count on them rewriting the way classic does keywords to work in the newer Lightroom. I just wouldn't count on that. Um, things have surprised me in the past, but that wouldn't be one I'd be holding my breath for. And that's just me pe speaking personally. Um, hi, how do I get my photos on my phone, Android, to automatically appear in Lightroom class when I take them? Okay, so the question is, how do I... This is a phone question. Uh, who asked that question? Uh, Andrew asked this question. Um, so I'm going to bring up, bring over my phone. And if I can get to it. Here we go. Here's my phone. And uh, let me make my phone bigger. And let me... I wasn't prepared to take a picture, but I got some stuff to shoot. So let me go into Lightroom on my phone. I'm going to press and hold hard. This is a, and it doesn't matter. He said Android. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to then uh, press hard to get right to the camera. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and take a photo. That will bring up the camera directly. And here's my little light box here sitting just with stuff in it. Take the photo. Great. And if I close that, uh, Lightroom will process that photo. And it will appear in the upper left corner in just a second. There's the HDR. Great. Now, uh, it's also, I see the cloud dots going back and forth. It's uploading the uh, 12 megapixel HDR raw file from my iPhone to the cloud. All right, we'll give that a few seconds to happen. Or actually, while that's happening, we won't even wait for it. While that's uploading, let me, let me an answer his question. Uh, so in Lightroom Classic, because you asked about Classic, in the preferences, there is a Lightroom Sync tab. And in that tab, there is a specified location for Lightroom Synced images. So this is where I'm telling Lightroom to put images I click on or I shoot or even import. I don't have to necessarily shoot them. But where, if I bring in images into Lightroom Mobile, whether I shot them with the camera, imported them already from the camera roll, whatever it is, and they sync up. When they sync up to the cloud and then come back down to Classic, where do they go? This is where they go. So I'm telling it which folder to put them in on uh, in Lightroom Classic. So let me see if that one finished. It did. So if I were to go look now, um, go to my folders, on my hard drive, in my pictures folder from Lightroom Ecosystem, and I were to go all the way up, I'm not looking at them by date, apparently. And I imagine that this photo that's coming in right now is that one that we just shot. So we'll give it a second and boom, there it is. So now if I were to decide to move that to any folder on my hard drive, anywhere I want, I would do that in Lightroom. And if I were to decide to put that in a collection, which I'm going to, uh, we were just down. I'm going to put it in a collection we were already looking at. There it is. And now it's in that collection along with all the other photos we were just working with, including the Fred photo that we shot, that we edited over in the other Lightroom, because these are the same photos synced. Uh, so that is to answer that question, how do I tell Lightroom Classic where to put the photos? You do that in the preferences. And then once you go to that folder, any shots you took or any shots you imported on your mobile devices will be there in their full resolution. So if we were to go look at this photo and we were to look at the metadata of it, uh, we can see that this is a 12 megapixel 
uh, all the settings that were shot, it was shot with, shot on the iPhone, so forth and so on, all that metadata is there uh, because that's where the image was taken. All right. Uh, Bing is not as smart as Tara. That's cute. Thank you. Speaking of backups, are there tools you recommend for local backup of the entire Lightroom environment? Well, I don't recommend you backup just the Lightroom environment. I recommend you backup your whole computer. So um, whatever your platform is, I'm sure there are backup tools that back up your whole system. So in my case, it would be, um, I'm on a Mac, it would be Time Machine. That's my first go-to for backup. Um, then Time Machine backs up the you know on a daily basis or hourly basis actually to different drives. You can even set it to back up to alternate between two or more drives, so that way you're even backing up more. Um, and then the one of the the main uh, storage unit that has all my 200, 250,000 images is actually a Drobo. Uh, Drobo is a brand name, so that's a that's a <clears throat> an um, a NAS storage type device that uh, I also back that up to a local drive that's tons and tons of terabytes. And then that Drobo also gets backed up to, to the cloud uh, using a backup service called Backblaze. So Backblaze is the service I use to back up all my computers to the cloud. So that becomes my third backup at least. And I recommend everyone have at least all your most valuable, whether they're images or anything else, any data, to at least have it in three places. If you think right now, are my photos in three places and you can't quickly say yes, then you don't have a backup strategy yet, in my opinion. Uh, if they're just backed up from one drive to the next drive in the same house and something happens to the house, that's not really a backup. So they, there, needs, there at least needs to be one backup that's off-site. So again, back to the... Uh, other version of Lightroom, you're solving that because even if something happened to this computer, my sort, my one, if I don't have another backup, at least they're backed up to the cloud. So just keep that in mind um, that whichever Lightroom you're using, whatever you're using, everything should be in at least three places. Uh, you can never, no one's ever complained. Dang it, my hard drive crashed and I had too many backups to choose to get stuff from. Like my, all my data was current. I could pick any source I wanted, get all my stuff back. And gosh darn it, I wish I didn't have all those choices to get all my things back from. No one ever says that. They're happy when they can get their stuff back from multiple sources. Uh, all right, as long as those sources are up to date. Oh, this is a good one. So Tim asked, asked a question that is, uh, there's another distinction between classic and uh, Lightroom to cloud version. So in classic, your images aren't backed up, but you can sync them. Uh, what it does is it syncs what's called a smart preview. A smart preview is 2,540 pixels on the longest edge, so it's not the full resolution. If you have a 30 megapixel camera or a 50 megapixel camera, that's not a 30 megapixel file. So, the, but the big difference is once you put your images in a collection, you then have the option, once you've turned on syncing in Lightroom, to pick and choose which ones will get synced. So I'm telling it, don't sync Ice Lagoon because it's not checked. Uh, it's got 12 photos. Those 12 photos, if they're not in any other collection that is synced, will not be in the cloud. So I do get to pick and choose which collections get synced to um, Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Cloud via Lightroom Classic, Smart Previews, not full resolution. But in the uh, cloud-based version, there is no choice. If you import it in, and you have the minute you have an internet connection, it is going to sync up. It is going to sync the full resolution, um, which is a good thing because for a beginner standpoint, I never have to worry about it. The bad thing is that um, you don't get a choice. It's like if you import it, it's getting synced. Uh, and that, that's good or bad depending on how you look at it. How would I add a lens profile for a lens not listed? How do I create an import, uh, create an import task to run when I bring photos in? So that's two different questions, it sounds like. So Mary's asking, uh, how do I create a lens profile uh, if it's not listed? I've never created a lens profile in my life. <laughs> so I was going to say this early on. I've been using Lightroom since the inception of Lightroom, but that doesn't mean I know everything. I know a lot. I know quite a bit, but that's one where you stump me because I've just never done it. I've never had to. Um, all my cameras luckily have been supported. All my lenses have luckily been supported, with the exception 
I will give you one caveat. It would have been nice. Uh, I, I also fly drones. And I remember when I got my Mavic Pro. Uh, the Mavic Pro wasn't a, there wasn't a lens profile for that specific Mavic or that specific DJI drone. They had older ones, uh, but they didn't have the, that specific one. So it would have been nice to create a specific profile for that particular lens on that particular drone. I just used the other ones, <laughs> just like they were close enough. Uh, so I don't know the answer to how you would create a lens profile, because uh, I usually just rely on them to come in the next update of Lightroom. All right, uh, but what was the other part of your question? Uh, how do you create an import task to run when I bring photos in? Depends on what the task is. You can now in Classic, for example, and this is a classic feature, you can create uh, in your preferences, you now have um, presets, a presets tab in the latest version of Lightroom Classic that does allow you to pick and choose things when upon import. So I can pick and choose what um, what profile or camera settings or preset that I want to be want applied to uh, the cameras or to I'm sorry to the images. You can even do it by camera. So you can say when I shoot with my Nikon, bring them in this way. When I shoot with my Canon, bring them in this way. Provided you had both platforms, but even if you had same platform with two different bodies, you can tell it which each body what to do and what to bring them in. So Mary, I would start here, uh, unless there was more to it that you wanted. With tethering, the same thing, you can choose an import. So, uh, or um, not an import, you can choose a, um, I don't want to say profile, you can choose a preset. You can choose a preset for how you want things to look on, on tethering as well. So just keep that in mind. All right. Is there any advantages to move photos from Lightroom CC to Lightroom Classic? Okay, so Carolyn says, I shoot with my phone. Is there any advantage to moving photos from Lightroom CC to Lightroom Classic? No. Again, because we want you to pick one. So it sounds like you're fine with Lightroom um, Cloud, or Lightroom CC is what it used to be called. And if you don't, if you're not missing something, you're not saying, hey, I wish I had blank features in Classic, then there's no reason to put them in Classic. Like I said, uh, Adobe's stance is that you should pick one or the other, not continue to try and use both, because as Chris mentioned earlier, uh, there are some things that don't sync over, like keywords. So um, if you're happy with using your phone and bringing them into Lightroom and having them all over all, all, all your devices and on the desktop, stick with that. There's no reason to bring them into Classic. Uh, where do you change the file format and return? Okay, so uh, who's this? Lloyd's asking... Where do you change the format for when it comes back into, uh, like I told you, I switched mine from TIFF to PSD. So when we did that edit earlier in the Photoshop, how did I make that change? Uh, I always forget where it is. I think it's either in, I think it's in catalog settings, maybe. Nope, I always guess wrong. I always guess the wrong one. So it's in regular preferences and it's in external editing. So when you go to external editing, you choose between TIFF or PSD and it will, it's on TIFF by default. You're going to choose PSD if that's what you want. Uh, those are the two choices because those are the two choices that support layers. Uh, if you want to come back as a JPEG, then you'd lose all your all your layers. So that's why those are the only two choices because these are the only two choices that would work with layers. Um, okay. Good morning, Daryl. Is there a way to view Lightroom edited? I assume you mean raw files in Windows Explorer without saving the photo out as a JPEG. Uh, Betty, that's a Windows Explorer issue. Uh, so is there a way to view Lightroom edited raw files in Windows Explorer without saving the photo out as a JPEG? Uh, so you're basically asking, is there a way for me to see my raw file without, without the edits I've done, without... Um, exporting it out as a JPEG. So so that's either one of two problems. Either I'm assuming now that I read it twice, you can see raw files in Windows Explorer, you just don't see the edits. If that's the case, I can fix that. If you can't see raw files in Windows Explorer, that's a Windows Explorer problem. I can't fix that. So the answer to your question, if I, um, let's play with the photo we just took. If I go into this photo, and I go make some edits, whatever those edits are, let's say I crop it, Crop the headspace here. Oops. Crop it down some more. Crop it up some more. 
and we'll go ahead and get out of crop and we'll run auto auto tone it oh it's already auto because it was an hdr and we brighten up these shadows a bit and we give it a whole lot more vibrance okay so i made a bunch of edits to that file if i were to go look at that file right now on the mac or windows i wouldn't see all the edits i just made and i think that's the question you're asking I, it would show me the original so the question is how can i see the edits i just made on that file outside of Lightroom, which is really the question. And that is by saving the edits to the file or to the sidecar. So again, it depends. If it's a DNG like this one is, it'll actually save the edits inside the file. If it's a camera raw file, like from your Nikon, Canon, Sony, whatever it is, then it's going to put a sidecar, uh, XMP sidecar file next to it, a little text file. As far as I know, I don't think the operating systems will see that edits that were done in that little text file. So from a DNG perspective, no problem. From a raw file, keep in mind, it may not work. So how would I even see it with a DNG? Well, <clears throat> I know we never think about this because we never have to save inside of, um, of Lightroom. Your edits are your edits. You don't ever hit Command S. You don't ever hit Save. You don't ever do anything like that because you don't have to except just trying to find the command because I normally do it from the keyboard. It should be under, oh, maybe it's under metadata. There it is. <clears throat> command S, just like you would in, in any other program. Photoshop, Command S, PC, Control Z, or Control S. Well, there's a Command S in, in Lightroom. And what that tells Lightroom to do is save all your edits to the file. Yep, don't show me this again. I get what it's doing. Done. So now if I were to go look at it in the operating system or any other application, I would see my edits because I've saved them out to the file. Now, does that make the file significantly bigger? No, it just adds text to the file. In this case, the DNG or JPEG, it would add it inside the file. If it's a raw file that's not a DNG, then it's going to add it as a little text file right next to the file, wherever it's located. All right. Keep going. The second step of going back into Photoshop is what I was missing. So let's go back to that. The second step was, let's go to the one we were working on earlier. I thought it was one of those. It's this one. So all I did was add it again. So I just hit Command E, and now you get a question because if it's a JPEG, TIFF, any other format, you're going to get this question. If it's an edited file that you've already edited, it's PSD, you're going to get this question. The only time you don't get this question is if it's a raw file because it, it doesn't need to make a copy. It's already going to make a copy. You don't have a choice, in other words. So the choice it's giving me right now is, do I want to edit a copy of this, meaning make a new copy of this black and white or you know, the style I've done to it? Or do I want to edit the original layered color file? And if the answer is whichever one you want. This one will give me the text that I can change. This one will give me a flattened copy that's black and white that I can't change the text. So that's just bringing up edit again. We'll take it back into Photoshop and let me um, go in and keep working on it. Remember I told you it will come back as color because it is still color. That black and white only exists inside of uh, Lightroom. Um, so we could call this fashion. And now we click OK and we save it again. And we, uh, you know what, I can't live like that. Let's go and just current out a little bit. There we go. Let's get all designy on it. Save it. And wait for the save and finish. It's a big file. Done. Come back to uh, Lightroom Classic. And now it says Fashion. And again, we lost the edit because we went and changed the file. We changed the original. So now we'd have to edit it again. All right, uh, preset was the word I was looking for. Okay, great, Mary. Uh, SSD, yes, the Passport is an SSD. So I used two. The Lacie is a regular spinning hard drive, much cheaper. The uh, Passport, which I put away again, I think already. This is an SSD. So this is an SSD drive. Um, uh, this is actually a one terabyte, very, very expensive compared to the Lacie. They both do the same thing, it's just more protection because it's an SSD, less likely to fail, but could fail. The other one um, is a spinning hard drive. 
so we'll eventually die over time. Is there a way to be like that? Okay, we did that one already. Let's keep going. Is the quality of the mobile Lightroom giving the same amount of quality as the PC version? Absolutely, they're the same engine. So um, if I were to um, uh, import a file on the desktop, let's go back to the cloud version. If I were to import a file here and um, edit it, I think these are actually, let me see if I can check which ones are actually um, that I have the full resolution for. If it said, yeah, it's a smart preview only. Yeah, these are probably all smart previews only. I'm just trying to find one that I've originally imported into, uh, into this version with the full resolution. These are mostly going to be probably smart previews. This one's going to be the original because I just shot it. Uh, smart previews. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, if these were original files, editing them on the desktop or editing them on mobile would be the exact same uh, quality of edit. They would not, it would not be any different because it's using the same algorithm, same engine, same everything. So it's not like, oh, when I go to mobile, eh, it's, not, it's not as good. No, it's the same. Uh, you're starting, it depends on what you're starting with. So in these, like I said, most of these are smart previews because they came from classic. Um, but if these were, whether it's smart previews or not, the edits will be the same on any platform. Okay, next up. Good, I'm glad I asked, answered your question about the smart web or the web gallery, not smart web gallery, you said shared. Uh, no quality difference. Uh, is there a way in RCC to prevent uploading of files on the cloud, even with 100 gigabytes of storage? Uh, the cloud will fill up a uh, short time. Okay, so Tobias is asking a question about this version. Is there a way to prevent it from uploading the um, the high res version or the full version? Because with 100 gigabytes of storage, it's going to fill up like that. And you're right, because this was never designed for 100 gigabytes of storage. That's why the plans for this one start at one terabyte. And even then, depending on what you're doing, may not be enough. So no, there's no, there's no way to not tell it to upload the full resolution because then that defeats the purpose of this version. If that is your question, if that's where you're going, then you are a classic person because then you're only uploading smart previews. And by the way, there is no limit to the number of smart previews you can sync to the cloud. It's unlimited. It's been grandfathered in since the beginning of Lightroom on, on mobile. Um, so that's why, again, I love Classic because I have the high-res raw files on my desktop. It syncs uh, uh, smart previews to my mobile devices. So, for example, if I were to go to my, um, if I were to go to my iPad and I were to let's just change one of these. Let's go. To, I don't want to change that one. I like the way I want the way it is. Let's go to one of these that I, I can change. Let's say this one. And I were to go in and I were to make a change to it like a uh, crop, for example. Crop's an easy one to see. And we'll crop it in really tight. Okay, done. Even though that's a smart preview the metadata of that crop is being synced up to the cloud as soon as I get out of it, actually. Uh, being synced up to the cloud and delivered down to Classic or the other version as metadata. So the quality is not changing going back and forth. There's no downsampling. There's no uh, quality change that's going to happen between the two. It is what it is, and that's what's going to happen. And eventually, this one will up, should update to, say, fashion. Let's see. Yep, there it goes. That one updated to fashion. So it... As you see, I'm work. It doesn't matter where I'm working. Classic, desktop, cloud, Lightroom on mobile devices. I'm getting the same updates no matter what. And again, it doesn't care what the quality or the of the original is. So to answer your question, no, there's no way to tell it not to um, upload the full resolution. And more importantly, if that is your concern because you only have a gig 100 gigabytes of space, then you should be on Classic or buy the other plan, whichever one works best for you. Uh, okay. So we are already, as I feared, running out of time. We've got like a minute left. Let's see if I can get one more question in before that minute is up. Uh, using range adjustments in Lightroom Classic. Okay, that's a good question, Carolyn. Uh, that is one of those distinctions. So I see people using the range mask in Lightroom Classic, which is what you're referring to. 
how do I do that in Lightroom cloud version? It's not there yet. You don't. <laughs> so it, it's hopefully going to come at some point, but it's not there currently. So if you if you need range mask, that is going to be in a classic only feature uh, until it, it gets over to the other version. Sometimes I already need Photoshop. I think it's too bright. Then I can go back on our change. Okay, so uh, last question. Milton's asking, do I prefer lighting my photos in Lightroom? Sometimes already in Photoshop and I think it's too bright. Then I can't go back to Lightroom and change it. So I prefer to go use mask in Photoshop. Uh, well, keep in mind, Lightroom is using, when you're saying lightning, uh, adjusting, it's using the same thing as Camera Raw, so you could use the Camera Raw filter if you were already in Photoshop and you wanted to do the exact same thing you would do in Lightroom without having to go back to Lightroom. That's, that's the way I would look at it. All right, folks, um, I hope that you have gotten as many of the questions. I know there are more that we didn't get time to, not that many more, um, but we're going to start the um, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge in just a moment. I am going to be out of time. They're going to cut me off if I don't stop anyway. So with that said, uh, thanks everyone for joining me today. Uh, thanks for making my masterclass a success and stay safe out there and um, keep learning, keep being creative and keep doing what you do. So with that said, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching. We will catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.